So we'll move on to the second component of our model, namely that the brain computes an experienced utility signal at the time of consumption. Uh, so the first thing that I want to point out is that experienced utility is different from decision value. So the, the aspect that we've talked about in the previous video. Experienced utility is basically an outcome-related signal that we have encountered before when we when we uh, discussed, um, for instance, reinforcement learning. So the those are signals that are related to outcome. So when the monkey uh, receives a juice reward, he or she computes a, a prediction error. That is an outcome-related signal. And it's uh, something we look at it from a little bit of a different perspective here. Um, so experienced utility, or the, the signal that the brain computes when it experiences the outcome of its decisions, parallels the economic distinction between decision utility and experienced utility. So that's a distinction that's commonly made in the field of economics. And just to reiterate, we've, we've talked about this before in a sense, but not in this context when we talked about reinforcement learning. So when the brain is using these outcome-related uh, signals, so experienced utility, to um, make updating, uh, to predict uh, future decisions, or to update the value about an item uh, to improve future decisions. We talk about where in the brain this is computed. There are some key areas, namely the orofrontal cortex and the striatum. Um, and we'll talk about some studies next with one famous study that looked at the pleasantness of wine, which is affected by the belief about the price. So here are some examples of experienced utility in the brain. In the first slide, we have um, a study that looked at uh, pleasantness of liquids that were given to participants in the scanner. And they correlated with activity in this lateral region of the orbitofrontal cortex. So if you look at this, this is the bolt signal here, or the percent signal change uh, in the bolt signal. And here's the pleasantness rating. And you can see that when something was rated as relatively unpleasant, you have a decrease in this region in the signal, whereas when it was rated as something pleasant, you have an increase in signal in this region. So it, it, this region correlates with how pleasant you rate something. Uh, obviously, this is before the experiment, and then when it's experienced in the experiment. So this is an experienced-related utility. Similarly, there's this famous McClure study in a neuron uh, in 2004 where um, the authors looked at preferences for, for Coke versus Pepsi. And on the x-axis, we see the behavioral selection of Coke. So this is a um, relative to Pepsi. So number of Coke selections with 15 being the maximum. So these people only choose Coke, but they don't know what they're choosing, right? These are, this is basically a, from an older advert, uh, a replication where you have two dark liquids in front of you. You know that there's some form of Coca-Cola, but you don't know the brand. So the brand is hidden from them. And then you can see these selections of, of different uh, Cokes here. Um, on the y-axis is percent signal change to drinking Coke versus Pepsi. So this is, again, the experienced utility signal here for one versus another item. So for one brand versus another brand. And then here, the number of selections of Coke, the behavioral parameter that reflects the um, preference for one versus the other, kind of similar to the preference ratings or the ple pleasantness ratings here. And we find that this correlates with activation in the ventral media prefrontal cortex. And obviously, this has been replicated in other domains, such as attractive faces, which also have a sort of uh, experienced utility outcome, again, in the medial orbital frontal cortex. And again, you have this um, attractiveness rating here. Um, for low uh, ratings, we have a decrease in activity in this region. And for high ratings, we have an increase of activity in this region. So when we observe pleasant faces, uh, we have this reward activation in medial O of C. And finally, when we talk about odors, we can have, again, subjective pleasantness ratings for odors that can be relatively pleasant or relatively unpleasant, where pleasantness on the right side of the x-axis and unpleasant on the left side. And then the bold signal change in this region in both ventromedial and sort of dorsomedial prefrontal cortex correlates with 
uh, quite nicely with these pleasantness ratings. So this basically implicates the orbital frontal cortex across a number of these um, types of stimuli in um, basically rating, or sorry, reflecting or processing experienced utility within the brain. Let's consider this excellent and very famous study by Hilke Plasman, published in PNAS in 2008, that uh, looked at these, these types of experienced utility signals, but then had this really intelligent uh, and very interesting manipulation, namely the beliefs and expectations were changed via the pricing of the wines. So let's have a look at this plot here on the right side. There were two three wines that were presented to the participants in this study. Two wines, um, well, two wines received two different prices. So there's a sort of uh, low, relatively low priced wine, the one in blue here, and that was presented, we call it wine one here, that was presented um, in the context of either being a $5 wine or a $45 wine, but the liquid that participants drank was exactly the same. And then a, a little bit more expensive wine that was presented as a $10 or a $90 wine. Again, the exact same wine was presented in two conditions, either as being worth $5 or being worth $45 or $10 and $90. So there, there was a bit of deception that the authors used here. But that makes this experiment very interesting. So how does, how does perception change uh, when you present the same wine, the same exact fluid, liquid, if you will, uh, in two conditions, namely when it's relatively cheap or relatively expensive. So does this marketing action uh, also affect how much people like it? And, and is this reflected within the brain? So what I'm showing here is the, um, the, the timing of the task. So they received the information, then they received the, the liquid and were asked to swallow. Then they received water to rinse their mouths to to be ready for the next trial, which they then um, also swallowed. Uh, okay, this is the timeline, but let's look at how the behavioral results look like. So in the liking domain, participants were asked to uh, rate how much they liked it on a scale from one to six, so with very much or not at all. And it turns out that they liked the more expensive wines, both more than the less expensive wines. Um, so if you give a wine to participants and tell them that it's more expensive, they like it more. But when it comes to intensity, they are not rated even across the conditions as being more or less intense. They just like it more. Um, without the price, liking does not change either. So you can see that the ratings are similar in these uh, different conditions. Even when they're presented as two different wines, liking doesn't change. So it's the, the pricing information that does change how people perceive this, the wine and how much they like the wine in particular. Let's look at how the brain does this. So we can look at this. This is the neural correlate for the first wine from the, from the onset of actually receiving the wine around about here at the zero point. Um, and you can see that there's a large difference in this over the frontal cortex region here uh, in the in the bold signal in response to drinking this wine, right? So you have the expensive wine at the top, in this case, the $5 wine, and the less expensive wine, the $45 wine. Sorry, the other way, the other way around. The expensive one is the $45 wine that's at the top, and the less expensive one is the $5 wine that's at the bottom. There's a clear distinction in the over the frontal cortex uh, and even more pronounced when it comes to the $10 wine in blue at the bottom and the $90 wine, the more expensive one, at the top. So this information uh, about how, how valued the wine is by others seems to influence the reactivity of the orbital frontal cortex when, when we consume these wines. So marketing actions like this can have a significant impact not just on how much participants like the, uh, the, the wine, but also how the brain responds to these types of wines. And this is really um, one of the first studies well, uh, that, that has shown that uh, neuromarketing might be something um, valuable for the field of marketing. So it's an interesting study that, that underlined 
we can look at experience experience utility in the brain and this can be uh, shaped by our beliefs and expectations which which obviously can be something that marketing can influence <laughs>